Okay, welcome to our PowerPoint presentation on lab number six of the brain and nerves. When we study the brain, we can think of the brain as divided into several different regions. The top wrinkled portion of our brain is called the cerebral cortex. These rises in the brain tissue that we can see here that are uh, kind of zigzagging throughout the hemispheres of the brain. These are called gyri. So the rises in the brain tissue are gyri. The deep grooves or valleys in between the gyri, those are called um, a, they're called sulci or a single one is called a sulcus. If we have a very deep groove or indentation, we call that a fissure. So here's a the longitudinal fissure that divides the cerebral cortex into left and right hemispheres. So the cerebral cortex is our thinking portion of our brain. We call it our thinking cap because it actually sits on top of some central brain structures that we'll talk about. So down deep inside underneath the cerebral cortex is the diencephalon and the diencephalon is shown in purple here you can think of it almost like a peach pit in the middle of a peach. It's shown in purple and we'll talk about the specific structures of the diencephalon in just a little bit. So just in general it's that central portion of the di um, of the brain. Here we can see it's not just one circular portion but it's actually two large um, somewhat spherical um, swellings inside the center of the brain shown in purple. The brain stem is shown in green here and that is the vertical stalk of on which the brain sits. If you think about um, the cerebral cortex sitting on top of and the diencephalon and then the brain stem supporting that, it's the like a carnation, the stem of a carna carnation would be what we would equate the brain stem with. So it's shown in green here and we'll study the different portions of each of these major areas in a little bit. So the cerebellum is a small little brain, it's almost like a mini brain, that's where it gets its name, cerebellum, because it comes off of the the brain stem here. Here we can see the brain stem as well and there's this almost cauliflower looking uh, structure which we call the brain, or I'm sorry, which we call the cerebellum. So the cerebellum comes off of the back of the brain stem underneath the cere cerebral cortex. And we'll talk about the functions of these different parts of the brain when we get to our lecture discussion. Looking at names of fissures and sulci that we find in the brain, this long central sulcus is called the longitudinal fissure. The longitudinal fissure divides the brain into left and right halves. So it runs down the center of the brain, dividing it into left and right hemispheres. You may have heard some people are more right brain than left brain. This is the longitudinal fissure going down the long axis of the brain. On the side of the brain we have the lateral fissure or the lateral sulcus and that forms the boundary of the temporal lobe. So th this area here shown in purple is the temporal lobe and the lateral sulcus is on its top border or its most superior border. That's the lateral sulcus. The central sulcus sits on the head kind of like a crown on the brain and that's here, the central sulcus, that goes through over to the other side so it separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. So looking at the lobes we have the what's shown in pink here, the frontal lobe, then we have the parietal lobe shown in the darker blue and the lighter blue at the back base of the brain just above the cerebellum, here's the cerebellum, this is the occipital lobe and then the temporal lobe is along the side of the brain. And each of these lobes of the brain does have a specific function. So neurons, as they're carrying information off the spinal cord through the nerves, um, from the nerves that extend off the spinal cord and brain, they're carrying information to specific parts of the brain into the specific lobes that have specific functions in the nervous system. So we have the frontal lobe in pink, the central sulcus, and then the parietal lobe that divides the front, I'm sorry, that is behind the central sulcus, and then the occipital lobe shown in light blue, and the temporal lobe shown in purple. Again, the lateral sulcus is found on the side of the brain on the superior margin of the temporal lobe. Looking at more specific structures within the diencephalon, um, first of all, forming the roof over the diencephalon 
is this flattened C-shaped structure called the corpus callosum. So think of it looking like a flattened C, and the two names start with a C, corpus callosum, and then I'll help you distinguish that structure. The corpus callosum is also, uh, they're also named um, commissural fibers because the two hemispheres of the brain communicate through these fibers that make up the corpus callosum. So it kind of holds that brain together in the center and again is a roof over the diencephalon. So this purple region here is the diencephalon. Specifically the thalamus is the rounded portion right in the middle of the brain. And there's two actual swellings that make up the thalamus, but we're looking at a sagittal section here, so we're just looking at one side of the thalamus. But it's um, you know, pretty round, oval shaped, really easy to distinguish in your models and, and in the sheep brain when we di dissect that next semester in general A&P. This region, this other purple, darker purple region below the thalamus is called the hypothalamus. So this region here is the hypothalamus, very, very important um, structure in the brain for controlling gland secretion as well as the autonomic nervous system, which we'll be talking about in lecture. There's a gland that comes off of uh, a stalk that hangs from the hypothalamus, and this is called the pituitary gland. So that's what this blue arrow is pointing to, is this pituitary gland. And that is actually a, an organ of the endocrine system, but because it plays a such, in, such an important role in the body, and it's uh, visible coming off the hypothalamus, that we talk about it here. So just know that this is not part of the brain, but um, the central nervous system controls that gland's function to a large degree. <clears throat> then we move down to the brain stem. The brain stem is shown in green here. We have three major regions of the brain stem. Just below the hypothalamus and uh, thalamus is the beginning of the brain stem here. This is called the midbrain at the top. And then this large swelling here that extends outward on the anterior surface of the of the brain stem. This is called the pons. So the pons is this largest piece here of the brain stem. And then below that is this not quite as wide region, but it's a little bit wider than the area below here. This is called the medulla oblongata, this final portion of the brain stem. And below that, where it narrows, that just becomes the spinal cord. So this region here that's not colored green is the spinal cord. So if you look in your lab packet on page 36, you'll see there's an opportunity to label some structures that we just talked about. And on the bottom of page 36, um, it tells you to label the lobes and the fissures. So be sure that you label the longitudinal fissure that would be going up over the entire surface from left to right over the page, the central sulcus, which would be going perpendicular to the longitudinal fissure coming down and then the, the coming down to the side of the brain and then the lateral sulcus which you would use to border the front half of the uh, temporal lobe. Then the second half of our lab discussion talks about the spinal nerves and the nerves actually have a number of um, these what are called a plexus that is a network of spinal nerves that they join together and interlace. So there's four plexuses in the spinal cord and the first one up here in the neck region is called the cervical plexus so we would label this as the cervical plexus and then below that is the lumbar plexus you can see those nerves go out over the arm, I'm, I'm not, I apologize, the brachial plexus this is called. So we have the cervical plexus in the neck the brachial plexus coming out because it's going to serve nerves of the arm. So we have the cervical plexus in the neck and the brachial plexus going out over the arm. Then we have this region where there is no plexus. So these are specific nerves that exit directly from the spinal cord and they serve the muscles over the ribs. These are called the intercostal nerves serving the muscles over the ribs. Then as we get down to the bottom of the spinal cord, we see where it enlarges toward the bottom, and then we see another plexus right here. This is the lumbar plexus in the lower back, and then the most inferior plexus is the sacral plexus. So there's four of these to label, the cervical, the brachial, the lumbar, and the sacral plexus. And if you look at your lab packet, as far as the nerves that you're responsible for learning on page 35 of your lab book, you'll see that there's one 
um, or mostly one nerve from each plexus that you'll be responsible for. Except for the brachial plexus, you have three nerves that you need to know. So the phrenic nerve is the first nerve we're going to talk about. That comes off the cervical plexus in the neck, and it comes down and stimulates the diaphragm. So to remember this, think phrenic, P-H-R, and diaphragm, P-H-R, both share those three letters in common. So the diaphragm is stimulated by the phrenic nerve. And there's a pair of these. It's only showing one here, but there'll be another one on the other side to serve the other side of the diaphragm. And that's important for breathing. The diaphragm, when it's stimulated, it contracts and moves down and allows the lungs to expand. And, when we, and then inhaling follows that process. <clears throat> Moving down um, the spinal cord then we have the brachial plexus and there's three nerves we can see here on the that come from the brachial plexus to serve the arm. The one on the thumb side of the body is the radial nerve and that makes sense because here we can see the radius that bone that lines up with the thumb is right there as well so that's the radial nerve and then the one on the innermost side, on the medial aspect, we can see is the ulnar nerve. So the ulnar nerve lines up with the pinky. And then the nerve in between the two is called the median nerve. So that is somewhat easy to remember in the sense that the median nerve is in the middle. So that is the difference between those three nerves. Radius, radial nerve, median nerve in the middle, and ulnar nerve on the pinky side of the arm. We already mentioned these. In between the ribs, we have the intercostal nerves that serve the muscle over the ribs, exiting the spinal cord. There is no plexus associated with these nerves, but you know they're important nonetheless because they help um, support breathing. The femoral nerve comes off the lumbar ple plexus, which is in the lower back. Um, the one nerve that you have to know that comes from that is the femoral nerve, which is shown here, this large nerve here that comes over the front of the leg. Here's the femur, so when you think of femoral nerve, think femur, and that is uh, the one nerve off the lumbar plexus that you need to know. The large nerve that comes off the sacral plexus, which is in the um, lower most aspect of the spinal cord. Here we're looking at the back side of the body because you can see the sacrum here. So this nerve goes down the back of the leg. Here we can see. So this is called the sciatic nerve. So they both start with an S. The sacral plexus has the sciatic nerve coming off of it. So those are related to one another. Be sure you know the plexus as well as the nerve. So again, the sciatic nerve comes out over the back of the leg. If you look at your diagram on page 37 of your lab packet, you'll see that each of the plexuses is labeled there. And notice that the, sac the sacral plexus has dashed lines as it's exiting <coughs> through the um, sacrum. And that's those dashed lines are indicating that it is going out the back side of that diagram, serving the back of the leg. So those are the structures that you need to know for the brain and nerves. Relatively short lab. Um, we'll be talking about the special senses next time, so be sure you review these color in the diagrams on page 36, and you should be good to go. That concludes our discussion today.